Okay, now that we have the sign intermediate value property tool in our hands, we can move on to looking at limits at infinity and infinite limits. Um, <clears throat> so again, you'll see when we do the examples, you can have some intuition, some um, how, to, how to evaluate limits at infinity. But if you want a definition, again, what is it worth? We need to use our math definition here. What we know is we know how to evaluate the limit at a point, right? By either plugging in if the function is continuous or by develop by using the extension theorem. When we're talking about x goes to uh, plus infinity or minus infinity, these are limits at infinity. There's not really a point there. So the question is, how do we again reconfigure the problem? How do we change the format of the problem? so we can use the tools we have. That, that's the issue. Again, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Um, how can I use what we have in this situation? Well, just think about it. If the variable is x, the function f of x, and x goes to infinity, that's a big problem. So x is 10, 100, 1,000. So how can I reconfigure the problem so that I can use the tools that we have? And the argument is, say y equals 1 over x, or x equals 1 over y. And if y equals 1 over x and x goes to infinity, then y, of course, goes to 0. So just by changing the variable, right, changing the function, changing the variable in this manner, we can use the tools we already have. This is clever stuff. This is, again, such a simple, relatively easy way to do this. Um, and that's how we can proceed. Again, you see, it's not all about brute force. Most of the stuff we do, I mean, you get hung up in the algebra maybe, but most of the stuff we do is straightforward. It's, it's really, if you could think about it, it's, it's, it's a good idea. So instead, if we were trying to evaluate x goes to infinity, we'll just look at this limit. And that's what we're going to do in this example. So here's an example. Again, I specify a function here. Specify a function. And I want to evaluate um, this term. Now, again, I don't want to get into, my high school to teacher told me, you just look at the 3 and the 5. Okay, fine. In this one simple example, we all know the answer. Let's go through it and see how the math actually works. Okay, let's, let's look at this. So again, the first thing I want you to note is when you say f of x, just give me the rule. There's a whole function attached to this. And in fact, this function is defined everywhere. The bottom is a quadratic and it doesn't have uh, real zeros. They're, they're complex. So, okay, so this is fine. And again, I should do this in a step zero, but this is an earlier version of the notes. Okay, so we do understand that there's the function. Now, this is the informal, casual way to do it. And again, I'm not against it. Okay, but it's not math, and again, understand, are you willing to bet your life on it? That's what we're talking about. Nobody's paying you to do math, you know, to calculate such easy problems, okay? So this is the issue. This is, this is the actual math reasoning. So notice, as x gets very big, the top, 3x squared minus x minus 2, looks like, the wobbly equal signs, 3x squared. Right? How does that work? Okay, let's look. I mean, again, understand, and there's nothing wrong with using intuition. It's a good check on the actual math. There's absolutely nothing wrong. You should always have some idea what the answer is uh, before you do any problem, right? So let's take a look. When I say x goes to infinity, I'm talking about a, a trend, like the limits we did before. 1, 10, 100. So x is getting larger and larger and larger, and we're looking for that trend. What happens is x gets larger and larger, right? 10 billion, a trillion, I don't even know what comes out there, right? Look what happens to the, to the function. Here, here's, the, here's the rule here. When you put 1 in here, we use the term order of magnitude. So something, that's why I picked these numbers, something is the order of magnitude of 1. So 2 is about one, order of magnitude 1. 1, 10, 100. These are orders of magnitude. So notice these terms are all the same order of magnitude and they're all an order of magnitude of 1, right? So 3 is an order of magnitude of 1. 1, 2. Again, you will help people talk like this. Now, what happens quickly when you put 10 in here? 
The first term is the order of 100, order of magnitude 100. The second is an order of magnitude 10. The third is an order of magnitude 1. You see, they're beginning to separate in terms of their size. When you put 100 in here, what's this first term? 10,000? So the first is on the order of 10,000. 10,000 compared to 100 compared to 2. If you put a million in here, the, the, the 2 is round off error. It completely disappears in the number of, of decimals your calculator can process, right? I mean, it's just garbage at this point. The 100 is fading away fast. So once, the, once x gets large, and we're not even scratching the surface. When you say infinity, you're talking you know, out there. So these terms don't matter. Only the highest order term matters. So what I'm saying when x gets large, informally, right, is that the only thing this looks like is 3x squared, right? It's like when I take my glasses off. Right? You all, it all looks the same to me. Only the 3x squared matters. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's an informal argument. It's an intelligent argument. In this case, it's correct, but okay. Same with the bottom. The bottom looks like, when x gets large, 5x squared. The other terms are junk. And again, don't I'm not trying to knock this argument. It's very clever, and you should do it. It's a good thinking process. It's an intelligent process. But it's not math, okay? And so if I look at the ratio at the function, the top looks like 3x squared, the bottom looks like 5x squared, right? So the whole thing looks like 3 fifths. Not because my teacher told me so, because this is how you do it, right? I mean, this is an argument. And so if I'm going to evaluate the limit as x gets large, it looks like 3 fifths, and so it's 3 fifths. And again, it's fine. It's a great argument. It's intelligent, uh, but it's not math. Again, are you prepared to bet your life on it, right? Are you prepared? I mean, we don't do math. It's just I don't do it for the fun of it. Okay, so that's the question. So now we want to evaluate how we actually do it doing math, right, using our limit evaluation tools, either by plugging in with continuity or evaluation theorem, right? It's time to be serious. This is a, I mean, again, this is good. I, I hope you think, I hope you learn to reason. This is good, and you see it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. But now let's do it using the tools, all right? So this is the problem stated again, and the definition I gave you is that when the limit goes to plus infinity, I'm just going to flip over the variable, right? Is that if, if y equals 1 over x and x goes to infinity, y goes to 0, all right? So I have to substitute in for x as 1 over y. Okay, so we need to calculate what f of 1 over y is, right? So I'm, I, I just, I don't like, I mean, in the definition, it's fine because it, it shows you intuitively what happens. But I like functions of the variable. I don't like functions of one over the variable. I mean, it, it's, it's the, okay, it's, you could say it's my hang up, but I, I prefer it. So I'm just going to call it with a, with a tilt over it. Just, you know, just again. So what I'm going to do is, here's my function f, all written out. All right, here's my function f. And everywhere there's an x, all I'm going to do is cut and paste 1 over y. Right? That's all I'm doing. Everywhere there's an x, I'm just going to cut and paste 1 over y. And that gives me my function f of 1 over y. Or I like, you know, I just like this form better with y here instead of 1 over y. That's just, just my hang on. Okay, so that's what I prefer. Notice, this cannot be defined at 0. 0 corresponds, y equals 0 corresponds to x equals infinity. It's not a point. So this is not defined at 0 by, by 1 over y. Clearly, this is not defined at 0. And you see, we're going to need the limit evaluated at 0. So our only tool is going to be extension theorem. Right? But we'll, we'll come back to that later. So this is the rule I'm given. Right? This is the rule I'm, going, I'm given. So to find a simplification of this rule, OK, we have to do algebra. And what I did was I multiplied the top and the bottom by y squared, and you get this. Now this one, so this is, this is nicer to look at than that. But more than that, again, they're algebraic exactly equivalent as long as y is not 0. But the advantage of this is it is defined at y equals 0, so I can use this, this term here as my extension. And, that, and that's the value of it. 
And again, it was a straightforward process. I simply replaced the x by 1 over y and cleaned it up. Okay, and so we're going to go through the exact same process. Is the limit point 0 in the domain? No. Is that point continuous at a equals 0? Well, again, no, that's, it's not. That's what we have. So we're left to use, the, we have to evaluate the limit using the evaluation theorem. We don't have another tool. Again, I want you to understand, I, we don't have another tool. There's no point thinking about it. What's the extension going to be? Well, take the same rule, only extend the domain. Right? Take the same rule, but I just extend the domain. I mean, that's, that's good. So, again, you want to make sure that you're using the extension theory um, correctly. The rules match up, right? They're exactly the same. And I really I only need y greater than 0 because we're going to uh, 0 from the positive side from above. And our function here is a rational function, right? Defined, defined at 0. So it's point continuous at 0, right? So you're good to go. You just use the extension theorem. Again, we, we use the definition. If I want the definition as x goes to plus infinity, I take y goes to plus to 0 plus. Again, this is very clever, very simple idea. And then we'll just evaluate that. I've called that function f tilde. Just because, again, I, I prefer it like this because you can plug in easier. I just think this looks clumsy. And so, okay, I've just cleaned it up again. By the extension theorem, right? I can go like that the two limits are the same, but the, the extension is continuous, so I can plug in, and then I just evaluate it. Right? I just evaluate it. And so I get three fifths, which is what I what I obtained earlier from the intuitive approach. So again, it's not bad to have an intuitive approach. There's, I, there's nothing wrong. I think that's great. Um, but if you want to actually know the math. Um, this is what you want to do. And again, this is very clever, very elegant. You just simply, instead of x going to infinity, y equals 1 over x, and look at y goes to 0. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty good. Um, a horizontal asymptote, and we'll talk about this um, in, a, in a little bit, is the line y equals the limit. Yeah, the limit has to exist and equals a number. y equals that number is called the horizontal asymptote. Um, Okay, so the same example, determine the horizontal asymptote. Well, previously we found the limit is 3 fifths, so by definition the asymptote is 3, y equals 3 fifths. Okay, so that's the idea. I mean, again, it's, it's interesting stuff. What does a horizontal asymptote tell you? Look at this picture. Look at this picture. Now, again, you have to understand how calculus really works. Now, I have it drawn between minus 10 to 10 because I wanted to get some, something going on in here. But if you zoom out, if you zoom this out, suppose you're working at a calculation around, let's say, x equals 100. Why am I going to work with this crazy definition of a function? If I'm out with x equals 100, it's 3 fifths. Just take the function to be 3 fifths. I mean, why go to the bother? Yes, will there be some error? Yes, but I mean, how accurate do you need? eight decimal points of accuracy, 50 decimal points of accuracy, fight smarter, not harder. So what an asymptote tells you is the behavior of the function far away in the far field. I'm not exactly sure where the word asymptote comes from. I think it's an ancient Greek or Latin. I think it means like you're standing in the crow's nest looking out towards the horizon, right? So you're looking out into the distance. You're looking for something out far away. So that's what you have. When this function, when x is large, why am I going to deal with it? All the action is around, right, is around the origin here. When I go far away, for, throw the function in the trash can. The function is 3 fifths. And you say, well, there's some error. You're breaking my heart. And you know, I, they, yes, how accurate do, do I need to be? So that's the argument we're going to make, right? Again, I just did minus 10 to 10 just to show you where the action was. But when we're talking about asymptote, you're talking about x equals 10, x equals 100, x equals 1,000, a million, a billion, right? You're not always working right here, 
Okay, so that's what the asymptote tells you, how the function behaves, what it looks like when you're, when you're far away. And that, I mean, that's useful information. And it'll pop up again when we do graphing um, later in the semester. So again, I'm not going to test you on this, but it's going to pop up later in the semester. But again, it, it's good to practice this to get, get a feel for the technique and understand what's going on. Okay, so good luck with that.